Hello there. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Resharper and how Resharper can help you format your code and keep your code looking nice and consistent and uh, working to a current style. Normally, what happens is that Resharper will keep your code nice as you type. So, for example, if we've got a return statement here, which is in the wrong place, as you hit the semicolon, Resharper will uh, format that block of code and make sure everything is okay. We have a similar thing where by uh, the end of a block, if we've got sort of uh, spaces and code looking in the uh, different uh, in the wrong place. As soon as we hit the closing brace, Resharper will reformat your code and everything works. So it tends to keep your code clean as you type and as you go. However, there are a couple of other ways of applying code format as well. So, for example, we can uh, select this uh, the, this property here, and we can use the Alt Enter menu here, and we get items here for formatting. We get several items as well. We can do things like surrounding and commenting things out. But the top items here are to format. We can actually format the whole selection. So if I introduce a few more uh, spacing issues going on here, if I select the property with my expand select statement, Alt Enter, Format Selection, Resharper just rewrites the code for us and reformats the code and gets working. There are a couple of other items here as well. We've got the idea to apply syntax style and clean up selection. These are related to formatting the selection, but they're slightly different. So formatting is tends to be about the layout of your code, where things uh, are placed, where the brackets go, where there's a space in between your code and a, an opening and closing brace and so on. Whereas syntax style is more about how uh, you can write your code. So C Sharp allows you to write code in different ways. For example, you could have multiple attributes and you can have uh, on a particular property, and you can have those stacked one on top of each other or separated by uh, commas. Your syntax style decides which one of those gets to be used. Another example would be using the, the this prefix uh, on member variables or using var or an actual type. These are all syntax styles. They don't change the actual semantics of the code, but they do change how your code is uh, your works. Clean up, clean up selection runs code cleanup over your code, and code cleanup uh, tends to do all of these things. It's, it's like a superset. It includes uh, code formatting, the layout of your code, but also the syntax style as well. It can also work on things like uh, naming standards. But if we go back to formatting selection here, we can see that we can expand this, and we get a few more uh, options here. We get a few choices here. We can do strict format so that it reformats your code per your standard. Uh, compact format and spacious format. And this is for really working for with long lines. And the compact format will try and reduce the amount of line breaks you have, giving you slightly longer breaks, whereas the spacious format will uh, optimize more towards a, um, a narrower uh, uh, field, uh, sorry, a narrower bit of code, but then with uh, more line breaks instead. Things get a little bit more interesting with the bottom two options here, especially this configure item. If we go here and have a look at the configure item, we get a dialog which shows us all of the items that are uh, in use in this particular code block. And so this makes it a very uh, easy way to sort of configure your code based on what is in front of you. For example, we can uh, scroll down to the uh, spaces before parentheses here, and we can see we've got this one here from uh, spaces before a method called parentheses. And if we check and uncheck this, we can see our code um, updating as we uh, type. There it is. And if we uncheck this, we can see that our code is updated. And uh, when we check it again, we can see the code is updated again. It's formatting as we are uh, changing it here uh, and we're modifying it. We can see that the spaces uh, in front of our method calls um, and the, the brackets within our method calls are, are updated. When we're ready to save now, um, we've got a couple of options down the bottom here. We can save it, and that'll just save it to our global settings. Um, we've got save to, which I'll come back to. Uh, save as comments, of course, we can cancel. If we save as comments, this will add the changes to that we made to our particular formatting directly in the code itself. And it says for that block of code, this particular formatting style um, should be applied. Let's just undo that. And if we select our code again and go back into configure, one thing we'll notice at the top of the file, uh, the top of the dialog, sorry, is that we are using editor config. And so Resharpa knows all about editor config. It will uh, read the file and it will apply that file against the current um, 
the, those settings against the current file. The values which are being set in editor config are being highlighted. So these particular changes here, which are around a method called parentheses, uh, are highlighted yellow because they're being set in the editor config file already. I can change these and I can click save and it would save it to Resharper settings. I can cl click save as comments and they will apply for just that particular block of code. Or I can use this save to drop down to save to different places. I could click save to the team shared setting and this would update a dot settings file which I can commit into source control. But more importantly, I can change and I can save it to editor config. And this will update the editor config file that Resharper is already using and it is already available in uh, the, the solution. So if I select that, Resharpa will then show me uh, an editor with uh, a preview of what the changes are going to be to the editor config file itself. And we get to see now we're just changing one value here. We're changing a value from true to false. And if I click export on that, that will save it to my editor config file uh, and we're good to go. Of course, if I don't want to edit based on my uh, selection, I can come into the options page and see all the different settings that are available for me for my formatting style. So under uh, C sharp formatting, I can see all the different options that are available uh, everywhere within the code. And I've got some options here as well, which will tell me that editor config is being applied here. And if I click any of these links, I can get taken to documentation about all of this. And when I want to change uh, items here, I can go to say braces layout and I can select an item here and I can just uh, edit and change them there. And as we are changing it, we get a little preview of the item down here. Perhaps not as convenient as changing it directly from the editor, but we can get to see what's going on uh, as we're changing it. And again, the items that are being used by editor config are highlighted. Uh, and down at the bottom here, I got my choice to save to Resharper settings, or I can save to my team settings as well. The other items at the top of the block here um, tell me that there are a couple of other useful inf bits of information there. So for example, uh, I can, it's uh, reminding me that I can use Alt Enter to uh, format the selection and uh, configure directly from the, the editor. Um, but it also says I can detect formatting rules as well. So let's have a quick look at that. Again, detecting uh, formatting rules is uh, nice and straightforward. You use Alt Enter, format selection, I open that, uh, and we've got the detect formatting settings item here. This now shows me the, the settings that it picks up that are different um, to the current uh, configuration based on what I've got selected. So what it's saying here is that this code block, which I have selected, has several lines different, and they are um, these are the values that I can do. Now I can change these, I can update these, and I can either save these to editor config or to my actual items as well. A little more configuration, um, which is in the general format style tab here. Is very useful. Um, you get the options here to read code style from an editor config files, uh, and I can write the current style to editor config. So I can click this, and it shows me all the different changes that would go on uh, based on the current styles and how I can export that to my editor config file. Or I've got an edit editor config file uh, interactively as well. We'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, before we move on, I just want to point out that we can read the code style from uh, Clang files if you're using C++, uh, and also from StyleCop files uh, you're using StyleCop. And we can also show an indicator in the status bar for when editor config is being used, and clicking on that will allow you to very quickly and easily edit the editor config file itself. We can use this edit editor config uh, interactively button to open up a new view of our uh, formatting settings options here. And this is slightly different now. It looks, looks very much the same here, but what's going to happen is when I click save, it's going to save directly to uh, the editor config file. So this is a way where I can work through and I can go and change all the items that I want to, and I can then make sure that that then will just get saved to uh, editor config. So it's an interactive uh, user interface driven way of working with your editor config file. The next thing I want to show you is uh, code cleanup. So under the uh, edit menu here, we've got this item here. We've got a small uh, section of block of uh, items uh, for code cleanup. We've got a couple of options, uh, code cleanup itself. We can run a silent code cleanup. Um, we can clean up just the files that have changed, which is uh, very useful. So if you want to uh, modify a bunch of files and then um, quickly run a code cleanup on them before you uh, commit them into source control, you can do so. Uh, and we can also then reformat code based on pure syntax 
um, layout uh, and apply the syntax style such as um, changing the var keyword or the this keyword or uh, public and private modifiers and so on. Code cleanup allows us to run a whole load of different options uh, over your code to do cleanup. Part of that is going to be um, sort of tidying up the formatting and other is applying the, the var style, for example, and uh, all, all others. And we've got lots of different uh, profiles that we can use to, to, um, to work with this as well. So we, we have some default cleanup, uh, sorry, um, profiles built in. We've got a full cleanup one, the one which runs when we do reformat and apply syntax and the, the code, the, the profile that runs when we just do reformat code. We can uh, duplicate any of these and uh, work with them ourselves and then we can apply our own um, uh, rules there as well. So these can work on things like uh, XAML, XML, VB.NET, JavaScript files, uh, and so on. One of the other things we can do as part of Code Cleanup is to apply file layout. This allows us to change the order of files uh, as we work with them. So for example, um, we can make sure that we have um, properties, li uh, sorry, um, fields listed first, then the constructor, then methods and properties and so on. And uh, this file layout is uh, also um, editable as well. And we can do that through the file options. We've got a, a XAML file if you want to use it as a plain text file, or we've got a designer view, which allows us to look at the patterns that are available. These are the patterns that uh, ReSharper ships with, uh, and we can have a look at the default pattern here. If we double click on this, it shows us now the order of the type members uh, that will be shown when we do apply a file layout. So we get uh, public delegates, enums uh, first, then we're followed by any static fields and constants, uh, instance fields, constructors, uh, and so on, all the way down to nested types. This defines the order of uh, the classes that will apply when you do a code cleanup. We can uh, click on one of these here and you can see down in the right, the sort order for that. So we want to have read only uh, fields first, then sorted by name uh, and so on. Uh, we can also double click on this here and this shows you then the constraints, what it means to actually be um, an instance field here. So we've got uh, an and condition here. So it's these two items have to match. So it has to have a, a kind of field and a not static value here. We've got items on the right here in our toolbox, which we can drag in and uh, work with that. So we could have say, and uh, name equals a pattern here, uh, name equals, um, let's, call it, let's call it something different than that, uh, name equals type. This will make sure that this will only match for non-static instance fields of name type. Let's just delete that because that's not terribly useful. Uh, and if we come back, we can have a look at the default pattern. We can uh, switch back to our patterns here. We can see something a little bit more interesting. If we want to match, say, uh, end unit test fixtures, we can double click on this pattern that already exists. And this tells us that we want our setup and teardown methods first, everything else, and then finally our test methods. So if we double click on setup and teardown methods, this is a condition. Again, it's an and, all of these conditions need to match. We say that it's got to be a method and this condition has to match. This condition is now an or statement. So it has to be setup, teardown, test fixture, setup, test fixture, teardown, one time setup or one time teardown. As long as one of those values is true and it's a method, then it matches this setup, teardown methods and we apply then uh, we, we will order it first here. To match the end unit test fixtures, we have to click this cog here and we switch to our constraints view. And we, this is how we recognize what a, an end unit test fixture is. Again, we've got an and condition. We're going to say that it's a, a class and one of these or conditions is true. And the or condition is that it's got a test fixture attribute, a test fixture source attribute, and it's got one of these members, which is a method with an attribute of test attribute, test case or test source attribute. With this um, file layout, you can add in your own patterns as well to recognize your own types of classes uh, and then define the layout of uh, the order of the classes that you want to have uh, when you do a code cleanup yourself.